While camping at Brazos Bend State Park, this person kept zipping by my campsite and I couldn't wait to talk to them. First I thought it was a man, they were going so fast, but then I found out it was a woman and I knew I had to talk to her. You're not your disease, guys. So I'm Wendy Larson. I am a hand cyclist. This is actually a type of racing wheelchair and I do marathons in this. So I come out to Brazos Bend State Park usually about three or four days a week to do my training because I do about 50 or 60 miles at a time typically. And I need to be somewhere where it's safe with low speed limits because I am hard to see with being reclined like this. So this is a nice safe place and I love the park. It's a beautiful park and I really just have fun out here doing this. So do you camp or you are you you come? No, I'm local enough that I just drive. I live um, actually in League City. So it's about a 45 minute drive for mm -hmm. me, but I'm an elite hand cyclist. So this is, I'm a sponsored athlete and I travel all over racing. My main race distance is the marathon distance. So I actually just won the Boston Marathon in October and set a course record there. Wow. But this happens to be where I do most of my long distance training. This is so incredible. And so how long have you been doing this? Um, for about five years is how long I've been hand cycling. I got kind of a late start in life on this. What does that mean? You want to say how old you are? No. I'm 50. You're 50. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Incredible. Thank you. And so it's a wheelchair. What, what are you calling it? It's a hand cycle. It's a hand it's cycle. Called. It's completely upper body powered and it's a type of racing wheelchair. So for road races, for marathons, half marathons, that sort of thing, you have two types of racing wheelchairs you'll typically see in those races. One is a push rim. And that is basically a regular wheelchair, but it has three wheels, one in front, two in back. And they're more upright. They lean forward and actually push the rims of their wheelchair with their hands. Uh -huh. More like your regular everyday wheelchair. Right. This is, obviously, I'm in a recumbent position with my legs out front, and then I pedal it like a bike. So typically... When you see somebody in a hand cycle, that usually means for whatever reason, their disability does not allow them to be in a push rim racing wheelchair. So I have a lot of problems with my spine and my back and my hips and my spinal cord. So my doctors don't want me in that position of a push rim racer because you have to be more upright and you're leaning forward and I can't do that with um, the diseases I have. So I have to be in a recumbent position because it supports my back. And so how are your legs in there? They're strapped in? Yeah, they're strapped in. Okay. Yeah. Do you have, I'm sorry to be personal, you have no movement in your legs? I do have some movement in my legs. Okay. Um, I'm very unstable. So I have a spinal cord injury at L5, but it's not complete. So I have um, partial feeling in my legs, not full feeling in my legs, mm -hmm. and they're very unstable. I can walk very short distances aided um, if I'm holding on to something, but no more than about 10 feet usually before I But you have to fall. drive yourself here and get yourself into that thing. I do, I do. So I have my wheelchair in my car, and I've got a system. People will sometimes stop and ask when they see me loading and unloading if they can help, but... I do this so much. I've got my system down. Right. And I, it's a lot easier for me to do it myself than for somebody to come help me, actually. Right. Right. So, so how many, how much will you do when you're exercising and you're training right now, like today? Uh, so, today I'm doing about 50 miles. I'm just about finished today. So, uh -huh. I think I'm at 45. So, I, was, I stopped because I was about to start my cool down anyway. Oh, so and I saw it. her out here looking and watching, and I wanted to tell y'all what it was I'm that so you were glad. seeing. <laughs> so, when you're, when you're racing, are you racing against others in the yes. similar? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I, this is so interesting. And for this, because this is for women stepping outside, what made you step outside your box and do this? Um, because doctors told me I couldn't. I love <laughs> it. I love it. That's great. 
I got started racing because doctors, yeah, my doctors never thought I could do anything like this. And I just kind of got fed up with it one day. I'm like, I'm going to do something. And um, I'd been working with a physical therapist for a long time. And I had been trying, my, my disability is progressive. It's getting worse and worse over time. And I had been trying to do half marathons on my feet. And I was doing them with a walker. And I was slower than, you know, a turtle in molasses, but I was outside doing them. Um, and I started doing that because doctors told me that I would never walk or be able to run or anything like that. So I just, I decided one day, yeah, I am. <laughs> Yay and then I, it kept getting worse. And so physical therapist finally said, have you thought about hand cycling? And I said, what is that? So I Googled it and I Googled hand cycling Houston and I found a couple of groups for athletes with disabilities and went out and tried it and just absolutely fell in love because I, I love the speed. I love being outside and it's something that I am physically able to do. And I spend a lot of time. I just kept getting more and more competitive. And so now I'm like racing some of the biggest races in the world. I'm and so doing excited really well. for you. Fun. How I'm do people it. keep track of what you're doing? You have a website or anything? Um, so I, on Instagram, I am at Disney Hand Cyclist. And I also have a Facebook page. It's Wendy Larson Hand Cyclist. And that's Larson with an E, L-A-R-S-E-N. Great. So, but you can Google my name, Wendy Larson and Hand Cycle and stuff will pop up. And so who's your sponsor? Uh, I have a few different. So um, Team Catapult, uh, based out of Houston. Uh, Core Sports, um, they help sponsor me. Scratch Labs. Um, Girls on the Run, Greater Houston, um, they help sponsor me. So I have a few here and there that help. Achilles International um, also helps out with some of my stuff. And then there's Challenged Athletes Foundation. And all of those have helped with my coaching costs and my equipment costs and race fees and travel expenses and all of that. Wow. So it's not nearly enough to cover all of it, but every little bit helps. Every bit helps. Yeah, because it's a very expensive sport. <laughs> so if people wanted to, to sponsor you or donate to you, what would they could do through, through your website or Facebook page? Uh, they can contact me on Instagram or Facebook. Either Great. One. What That's questions awesome. do you have, Gisa? You're an eight-year-old little girl watching this woman do this. What do you think? I think it is very interesting how you do it. You have any questions Thank for her? You. It's fun. It looks fun. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> I need to go really fast when I'm going downhill. That's the most fun. <laughs> How do you steer, someone says. Very carefully. Steer. It's very difficult to steer. So what I tell people, my car literally has a better turning radius than my hand cycle does. Literally. So you just, you learn to steer. It takes time. But you use your arms to go back and forth. Ah. Um, but it is very difficult to steer, and that takes a lot of practice. I have a couple of younger females that I'm coaching right now, and you know that's one of the things with one of the girls I coach. Worked with her all day Saturday. It seemed like just learning to steer and turn herself, that sort of thing. So it takes a lot of lot of practice. Your upper body strength has to be incredible. It's it's not bad. <laughs> so do you lift weights at home too or no, just this? Uh, no, I lift weights. I do strength and conditioning in addition to being on my hand cycle. Mm -hmm. So how much strength and conditioning I do and how much weightlifting I do depends on where I am in my training cycle. So right now I'm training for the Houston Marathon in January. Uh, Boston was in... Uh, uh, in October. It's normally in April. So I took a month where I had kind of a little bit of an easier training schedule um, after the Boston Marathon to give my body a chance to recover. And just within the last few weeks, we've really started to ramp up the training to kind of get back in shape for the Houston Marathon in January. And then from there, Boston will be in April again, so we'll just kind of keep on that same trajectory, getting ready for the Boston Marathon. 
Houston Marathon in January? Yes. So it is a Houston Marathon for these bikes. It's everything. It's right? for everything. Everything. Yeah. So we compete in the same race, the same route, the same day, everything that runners do. Wow. So um, typically the different marathons, they'll have all of the runners, and then they'll have a push rim category and a hand cycle category. Mm -hmm. So the hand cycles and the push rims do not compete against each other. We're two separate categories. And obviously we don't compete against the runners either. Right. So, but same route, same course, same day, all of that. What's the strangest thing that you've, has happened to you while you were training in the parks? I, there's got to be something. Training in the parks. Um, well, I've, I've had to stop for alligators to cross the road. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a bobcat this morning ran across in front of me. Oh, wow. A couple of days ago, I had two coyotes running towards me. And as they saw me, then they ran off into the, to the woods. Cool. Because so, you're really quiet. It is. Yeah, it it's is very, very quiet. quiet. It is very quiet. Mm -hmm. So I always try to, if I'm coming up behind somebody, I yell out to them to let them know I'm coming up behind them. That sort of thing. Uh -huh. Because otherwise I will take people by surprise. Yeah, alligators and bobcats. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You always see something cool out here, though. Yeah. And then you go, do you, then do you say, I better pedal backwards? <laughs> Get yeah. out of town. Yeah. yeah. Back up, back up. And, you know, and snakes and all of that. But you've never had an altercation of anything. No, you? no. That's cool. No, nothing like that. It's so exciting. I'm, I've been watching you and thinking, I just want to talk to her. I just want to interview her <laughs> because you are so strong in what you're doing. Oh, thank you. And you could inspire thank other you. people. There's so many people with a disability or an illness yes. and they think that life is over and it's not. Not at all. Not at not all. Not at all. But a lot of people don't even know this exists. Right. Yeah. So, and I'm one of those people I will stop and talk to anyone. I'm so glad. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, I will free, like if I see somebody out, you know, mm -hmm. out, you know, going on a, a stroll, a hike in their wheelchair, I'll stop and talk to them and tell them about hand cycling. Mm -hmm. And actually one of the girls that I'm coaching right now, that's how I met her. I saw her out on our hike and bike trails in her everyday wheelchair. And I had seen her a couple of times out on the hike and bike trails. And so I stopped her one day. And I said, do you know what this is? And I told her about hand cycling. And she, you know, she texted me later and sent me a message. And she said, you know, I think maybe I want to try that. And she actually did her first 5K race two weekends ago. Oh, that's great. And then she's going to do the 5K um, in January that's part of the Houston Marathon weekend. So, and I've been working with her. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, that's so cool. Well, we caught you going up a hill. There's a little bit of a hill here. Is it? Yeah, there's a little bit of hills. So I actually, I do this during the week. And then during my like regular training season, I actually drive up to Huntsville State Park every weekend to do hill training there because they have some serious hills up in that area. Yeah. So I haven't been doing that for the last month and a half since Boston, but I start back to hill training next weekend. So the next weekend, I'll be driving up to where I can get some serious hill training in because well, that's important for yeah. racing. Well, we're with Houston Women Hiking, and um, we are 8,700 or 900, I don't know. It, we get 100 women a week coming to Houston Women Hiking. So there's a real good chance you're going to see one of us in the park in Bastrop or the park in Huntsville because it's nice, all the surrounding. Because I go to Bastrop State Park to, to for Or I mean, um, I keep saying Bastrop when I think Brazos Bend. I oh. Brazos Bend. Well, well, Bastrop is another one I go to sometimes. Uh -huh. If I get tired of Huntsville, I go to Bastrop State Park for, uh -huh. for my hill training. <laughs> but I'm always in the state parks, always. Oh, like, that's nice. Three, four, five days a week. And everybody can say hi to you now that they know who you are. There you go. Exactly. Thanks exactly. so much for stopping. This was great. I love what, it. What is your handle on Instagram? At Disney Hand Cyclist. Disney Hand Cyclist. Yes. And she's on Instagram and on Facebook, and yes. we got it all in the video. Face, so. Facebook is Wendy Larson Hand Cyclist. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. You're gonna, gonna watch her take off. <laughs> are we gonna watch Wendy take off? Yeah. Oh, wait. Thank you, Wendy. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. Nice to you. Thanks.